Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are in uh, Earth orbit today, finally, uh, rejoining the uh, crew of the uh, Kerbal Orbital Laboratory as it is uh, trying to line up with uh, the KSC. Um, we have a lot of science left to be done, but unfortunately we are running up on the deadline for this contract, so... Um, Science or no science, we're going to have to uh, burn for broke and get this crew and their ship home so that we can get paid on this contract that we absolutely cannot afford to fail. So the node has been dialed in. We'll just do a uh, very abrupt about face uh, plus a little probably useless inclination correction. Uh, we got fuel to spare, so I did not feel bad about this. Um, we may or may not be uh, several dozen tons above our rated return re-entry weight uh, what with all the laboratory and the foodstuffs and the ridiculous comms antenna that is bigger than the shuttle itself so getting rid of some uh, excess propellant uh, at this point is kind of a non-issue we might as well at least make a you know, half-hearted attempt to uh, put this thing down on a, an actual runway instead of a, a pretend one like normal. So with um, most of the inclination adjusted for, we'll turn to retrograde and just uh, get our periapsis down to a suitable deorbit and then make one last check for uh, any goody bits of science that we can go ahead and bring home and get credit for that way because... Every little bit of science we take uh, gives us uh, a little more money. And uh, I'm also very curious to see what happens to unlaboratory science that's still in a laboratory uh, upon vessel recovery. So we'll uh, run that experiment as well. And then we'll get the crew up into the forward quarters uh, for reentry. And then, um, well, we'll promptly run headlong into the first issue we experienced during this reentry. All right, so I forgot that this big comms antenna does not retract. Um, so I would much really rather not re-enter with this thing dangling here. So it comes in at a little more than a ton. And for some reason, our pilot is holding both uh, cordless drills. But uh, we've got to have two Kerbals out here to detach this thing anyway. So we'll just go ahead and park him right here. And uh, yeah, let's switch back to the shuttle and get out our engineer who is the only person qualified to use said cordless drills and uh, see if we can't just detach this thing it'll hit the atmosphere and burn up I'm sure it's a relatively weak part but first we're gonna do a little person-to-person -person handoff here you give him a drill equip thank you come on KFC anytime now Garbage collecting. Nope. Okay, we can highlight stuff up too far or too heavy. Our pilot seems to have drifted back a bit. Yeah. Come on. Snuggle up. It's okay. Pretend you like each other. And there we go. We'll just get kick it out here. I mean, uh, I don't want there to be any colliders. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Whoo. Okay. There. Yeah, if we... Detach this thing and that dish was clipping into the shuttle, it would be almost certain catastrophe. So we'll just uh, give this a quick little kick and set it adrift. Uh, I really hope that's going to be far enough away to not, I don't know, come back and bite us in the heat tiles. And let's go ahead and get our crew back in. Board, thank you. Switch, pilot. Yeah, we're really going to need you for this one, so... Uh, if you could just go ahead and grab that there, ratter lung, adder rung, and board. Perfect. So with the uh, troublesome, non-retractable, almost science experiment uh, kicked free, we're going to go ahead and balance out some of our fuel here and uh, top off our life support in the forward cabin. Uh, before pushing our fuel aft. Basically, we are very, very, very much overweight. So we don't have much fuel left to work with. That should be enough to power RCS through descent, hoping we can keep that nose up. But um, since we have so much weight kind of dispersed throughout this, I want to get as much to the aft section as possible. And uh, 
very carefully watch this line and see if we stand any chance whatsoever of uh, coming down anywhere close to this Kennedy Space Center. Uh, polar orbit re-entries are a little more difficult to target, and uh, I thought at this point that we are absolutely going to fall very, very short. As here we are crossing the very southern tip of South America as we are hitting atmosphere and descending very quickly to about the 100 kilometer range when stability uh, starts to become an issue. Although the view, the view is fantastic. But uh, just a little bit of buffeting and uh, wavering through and well, I'll uh, turn you over to old me for problem number two. Okay, the undersized signal intelligence satellite thing burned up. We didn't catch that. The multispectral imaging platform burned up, and an EAS strut connector has burned up. So I don't know what this is overheating, but I really hope it's not critical. We're going to nose in just a little bit, get some of that, see if we can't bring that heat down. Nope. There it goes. Oof. What did we just lose? Another strut connector. Oh yeah, those are the ones on the uh, the boom thrusters. Oh yeah, those are the ones inside the port. That is uh, nominal. These I think are also strut connectors. Yeah, please let them be strut connectors. RCS port thruster ports, thruster ports. Oh, the solar panels. <laughs> Yeah, those can go. So what are these then? This this is hilarious. Octagonal struts. Yeah, that's the whole solar panel array disintegrating inside the cargo bay. Good. Completely normal. I assure you. And what else just blew? Octagonal strut. Alright, well... At least they kind of went in order, and we didn't have uh, debris smashing around in there. That would have been uh, horrendously bad. It looks like I think we burned off all of our ablative parts. So, I don't know, maybe we'll have the cross range to make it to Florida? Or, you know, land? Our periapsis is way up here and falling, so, you know, maybe? Oh no, engine heat warnings. Those those are the expensive parts. I would like to keep those attached if possible. We are coming in pretty heavy, so I'm not surprised we're generating more heat. But it uh, looks like we just got to keep our nose down a little bit. We'll keep those out of the airflow and uh, use them again next time, as is uh, entirely intended. So SAS is doing a pretty good job here. So I'm hoping... Uh, we can just continue to write this off, although at some point, undoubtedly, we're going to have to turn on uh, atmospheric autopilot. But for right now, we seem to be doing just fine, so I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm just going to not touch anything and uh, hope this works out. And we'll see our gross abuses of the uh, rated uh, return cargo capacity have had the uh, side effect of making our cross range absolutely incredible. Uh, part of this is due to the fact that we do have to keep our nose pitched down much further than uh, we normally do, so we're actually generating pretty steady lift, but our uh, raw tonnage means that we do not slow down nearly as effectively, especially in these uh, higher portions of the atmosphere where we're, there's just not really enough air to create drag. Um, it does, however, look like we are going to uh, <laughs> miss uh, the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, so this was a, a bit of a maneuver. Hopefully we can kick out the brakes and remain stable back, uh, now that we have atmospheric autopilot engaged and uh, try to deflect ourselves a little bit. Um, not the normal S-turn maneuver, but I would like to just kind of hang to the east, uh, hopefully as effectively as possible in hopes that uh, maybe one will slow down enough to actually land in Florida or two, maybe we can correct and land at the Kennedy Space Center, although uh, considering we're still moving at, what, 7 plus kilometers per second? Uh, 6.5 kilometers per second, and uh, crossing over the tip of Florida, I think the chances of that are uh, somewhere between slim and none, but heat effects are pretty cool looking. T 
damn it. Well, that's gonna hurt. <sighs> I mean, maybe we can really pitch into this now because uh, we already blew up the expensive bit. We'll just keep leading right on in. Oh, what was that? Air brakes. Okay. We'll, uh, let that just be a thing then. Oops. I think we're a little over our tonnage here. And breezing right past KSC. Uh, yeah. There's Florida. At least now our weight balance is even. With uh, two out of three RS-25s melted beyond recognition and uh, heat warnings abound. Um, you can probably tell by the rate of change of our speed and our altitude that uh, Florida, yeah, it's kind of a pipe dream, but Maybe I'll catch on to that here sometime soon. We are well past the threshold. We are not going to be able to land at KSC. Uh, what else is new? I guess. So we're just going to straighten this out. And uh, maybe try an opposite bank. I didn't think uh, we would overshoot by quite this much. Boy oh boy was I wrong. Another shuttle flight, another runway, uh, completely missed by, well, hopefully less than a continent this time, which means we are improving, and that's what really, really matters, is that we're going to take the lessons learned from this, uh, provided I'm ever stupid enough to try to launch a similar craft ever again, and try to target our, uh, re-entry and descent rate uh, a whole lot better than this. Um, you know, this is why... These teams at real space programs make the big bucks. Uh, you can't afford to miss by, I don't know, a continent or even remotely close to when, you know, your spacecraft has wheels. But uh, luckily for us, every runway is weighted, rated for a uh, hundred ton ish um, behemoth coming down orbital speeds. So uh, we just need to make sure that we're uh, over dirt when we land, although um, the SKS Heavy here is rated for water landings and um, does make a absolutely fine uh, cruising yacht, just, you know, slowly. So as we're finally getting down to about the 30-some-odd uh, kilometer mark, we actually start to make a difference in our uh, total drag, and uh, we can actually start to level this out and uh, look around for a place to land. But uh, it is becoming apparent that since we are so grossly overweight, we should probably uh, shed some of this tonnage by raining water, pea bags, and sandwiches all over the continent of the United States, which is, I mean, just a a normal day, I would suppose. So we're going to uh, vent all of our excesses as we are uh, making our approach in and uh, hopefully not ending up in a great lake where any lake would be preferable. Um, just, you know, hopefully. But uh, weight balance here is kind of becoming an issue. Uh, we are kind of really lackluster controls all the way around. So Hopefully we're not uh, so over our tonnage weight that uh, we can't put this thing down effectively. Although we have eyeballs on a strip of concrete and I think we're just going to go ahead and go for it. Or at least uh, make ourselves an about face and get through this cloud cover and see if we can't find a good spot to put this thing down. Alright, let's see if we can get below this cloud cover in a timely fashion before we pick up too much speed. Uh, six kilometers radar and hopefully we won't be greeted by a large body of water but instead a nice interesting looking runway don't know if we have the uh, ability to hit that we are so so bloated um, 
Standard controls, control deflect lets up that a bunch and see if we can get some of this roll authority back. There we go. Yeah, I think we're way too fast to make an approach on that. We'll see what we can't do about that though. Whoa, buddy. Is that me hitting the wrong key? Probably. Do I have to do you separately? Nope, alright. Yeah, I don't know what our stall speed is going to be at this weight, but it's probably going to be pretty high. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing we have lots of pitch authority. Roll authority is still a bit lacking, though, so we'll actually go ahead and open this up on our primaries and give them full roll control, which does give us just enough authority to really whip this thing around and bleed off as much of the speed as we can before we uh, turn in here into our final approach for landing. All right, nice and easy, please. Oh, it's fast touchdown, but we're down. Brakes, brakes, brakes. All one of them. Shoots out. Oh, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. <sighs> Shoots cut. And we roll to a stop. Let's go ahead and lock these brakes open. Yes! Ah, well, you brought most of it back. Good job, rookie crew, and uh, welcome to Earth, and... Oh, Chicago's down there. That's all Chicago. I don't know. Even if we're in Illinois? Probably Michigan? Maybe? So, welcome home. You missed by exactly one continental United States. Uh, yes. <laughs> but we're here, and I'm very curious to see what happens to the collected science that's in the bay uh, as we hit recover. Mobile processing lab got us a couple of fractions of a science point there. I don't know what that's all about, but okay. Yeah, we did get some, some science there. I, uh, let's... I wonder if it's listed in parts as a as a resource. Yeah, seventy six percent value returned. Uh, two hundred and sixty two thousand funds, uh, plus a little bonus. Hey, it puts us over the million mark. That's cool. No, does not look like we get any credit for science that's uh yet to be researched. Uh, man, bummer. I guess that means we can run it again. No worries. <laughs> I don't think we'll be flying this vehicle again. This was um, more trouble than it was worth. Uh, let's just make sure Yeah, everybody... Yeah, Deanna doesn't rank up at all. One XP gained, though. Really? Really? Well, all right. But everyone else, rank one. Where's my contract? Really, guys? Oh, here it is. Contract complete. Thank goodness. Paid her. Awesome. Right on. That's going to do it for this one, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.